Iris suture fixation of the intraocular lens is a time-tested age-old technique first described by Dr. McCannell in 1976. Of late, this technique has been lost in the arena of numerous secondary IOL techniques. This technique has a few advantages over the others. Compared with the scleral suture technique, it has a reduced risk for suture exposure and suture breakage. Literature shows double haptic iris fixation of the PCIOL is associated with low risk for postoperative corneal edema and intraocular lens drop. In certain situations where back remnant is available, is it really necessary to do a double haptic iris fixation of the IOL? Is double better than single? Similarly, do we need two arms to do a push up? What about a one arm push up? Is it possible? Won't we fall down? Will we be stable? I think yes, we can. Bruce Lee's one arm push up is a powerful variation you could have in your training toolbox. Single haptic iris fixation of the intraocular lens is similar to the one arm push up, which can be initially challenging but a very attainable skill. Let us transform you as the Bruce Lee's of ophthalmology. Here, we show you how to approach a similar case where only half bag support is present. A 10-0 proline suture on a long curved needle is passed through the cornea, iris and then externalized. The suture bites have to be placed in the mid-periphery of the iris. A paracentesis is made in between the two suture bites. A Coogland's hook is introduced through the tunnel to externalize the suture loop from below the iris. The suture loop is twirled around the haptic of the three-piece intraocular lens. The haptics are gently flexed and placed in the sulcus area. The intraocular lens should not be dialed in this case because dialing of the IOL can cause the slippage of the sutures. The suture ends are gently pulled so that the suture around the haptic is taut and does not slip away from it. The suture ends are trimmed and brought into the anterior chamber by swiping with the spatula or Sinsky soap along the iris plane from the periphery to the center. To secure the knot, both the suture ends in the anterior chamber are retracted through the same paracentesis outside the eye using a Coogland soap. The suture ends are tied together in such a way that the knot does not crush the iris tissue and it forms an arc between the two bites, not resting over the iris. Viscoelastic device is removed using controlled irrigation and aspiration. If vitreous strands are found in the AC, automated anterior vitrectomy has to be performed. Stromal hydration is done to seal the wound. If necessary, a suture can be applied. There are various other indications for this technique as well. This is a case of late in the bag lens dislocation following an ocular trauma, where an IOL explantation plus scleral fixation of the intraocular lens was planned, but we had other plans. Once the adhesions were released and mechanical constriction of the pupil was achieved, we planned for a single haptic fixation of the same intraocular lens. The intraocular lens was tilted and the fibrous bag complex was removed centrally by doing an automated anterior vitrectomy. The suture bite was taken in such a way that it passes below the haptic. It looks like a blind procedure. How do we know the bite has gone below the haptic? While pulling the suture, if the optic moves along, it confirms that the bite has gone below the haptic. Both the suture ends are trimmed and externalized through a paracentesis with the help of a Coogland suture. The suture ends are tied together so that the knot lies over the iris and does not crush it and it is finely trimmed and placed in the anterior chain. This is an intraoperative OCT of the single haptic fixation of the intraocular lens which shows that the needle is passed through the limbus and comes out of the limbus. Finally, we can observe that there is no lens tilt or decentration with this technique. The single haptic fixation of the intraocular lens is initially challenging, but a very attainable skill. This technique uses the pre-existing support and can be done as a time-saving procedure, a primary technique with lesser post-operative inflammation and most of all, low cost to the patient. Mainly, you don't need any fancy equipment or specially designed intraocular lenses for this technique. All you need is a Coogland hook and a 10-0 proline suture. It can be done as a primary procedure or a secondary procedure.